What's up YouTube, Del here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing an update to Red Eyes Black Dragon. That's right, the best thing and the worst thing about this deck is it has so much variation and flexibility, but then on the flip side, its strongest card says, nope, you can only do one thing, one way, and that is it. So, I'm going to take you through this profile, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you some alternative options that you can use for the deck if you want to change the direction or if there's not some cards you have access to. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe to show the appreciation for this type of video, uh, and I will bring you more legacy content as well. So we start off with the most recent card, and that is Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. Now the reason this card is so good is it searches you out Red Eyes Fusion, which is absolutely insane. I'm really hoping that in the future we get a card in the deck that says its name is always treated as Red Eyes Fusion, um, but it doesn't have the restrictions. Maybe it can just use the field in the graveyard rather than using the deck, which would be really nice because you've got so many cards that search it. Um, but Red Eyes are basically a slower deck. They say, right, okay, build your board and then get to your strongest card. Or get to your strongest card, protect that strongest card, and then go from there. On top of that as well, you can send a level 5 or higher normal monster from your hand or deck, which is great, to the graveyard as cost. Special on this card from the hand and then increase its level by 1. So this gives you more versatility to utilize a rank 7 engine in this deck, which is really, really cool. Um, the best thing about it as well, because it is a level 6 dragon, which is why it's a level 6 dragon and then increases its level when it special summons itself, is it can be used as fodder for your Meteor Black Comet Dragon, which is really nice because then it kind of caters to the both sides of Red Eyes where they want to use a 6, but then they also want 7s at some times as well. Then you've got the during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you get to banish it from the graveyard to add one Red Eyes Fusion from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So that's really nice, it allows you to recur the resource from the graveyard as well. But like I said, it's getting you to Red Eyes Fusion, so it's kind of one of them ones where it's like, okay, so I've got this on the board, I've made my rank 7, I've detached this as material, and then during my next turn, banish it, search me out Red Eyes Fusion, activate it, hope my opponent doesn't ash it or stop it, and then win the game from that point on. We've then of course got two OG uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon, followed up by one Dark Magician. Now you can technically play three Red Eyes if you want to, but what you've got to keep in mind is this one sends a normal monster, which is where one of the alternative engine comes in, which is what makes this really nice, is technically in the alternate engine, if you were to play something like um, Keeper of Dragon Magic, with something like Magicalized Fusion, or Greater Poly, or um, Ultra Poly, what that gives you the ability for is your Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon can Foolish Burial one of these that can then be reborn off of the back of the um, Keeper of Dragon Magic. On top of that as well, what you're looking to then do is you are locking yourselves into Fusion, so you can start playing stuff like Fusion Deployment, you can play Fusion or, um, Arraignment as well. There's so many different options, but you then just basically say to your deck, right, okay, I'm not going to Link, I'm not going to XRZ, I'm just going to focus on Fusion Summoning. Uh, and then you kind of go back to yourself, well, should I just then be playing Branded Red Eyes? Then, of course, we do play Triple Black Metal Dragon. So, again, this card's absolutely insane, is you get to target a Red Eyes monster you control, equipped it to it um, from the hand or field, and it gains 600 attack. If this card is just sent from the field to the graveyard in general, you get to add a Red Eyes card from the deck to the hand. Now, that's what makes it really nice, is technically, if you were to connect it to a Red Eyes, and then, that, then it fell off, it lets you add any Red Eyes card. So you can get to your Red Eyes Insight to deck thing, you can get to your Red Eyes Black Meteor, um, you could get into Red Eyes Fusion directly, everything else like that. The one that you'll probably more commonly know of what this goes into is your Red Eyes Darkness Metal because you'll see this in Dragon Link like new tomorrow. Uh, and then of course we are playing two Red Eyes Soul. Now this is obviously the second most recent newest card, this came out in Maze as a rare. It becomes Red Eyes Black Dragon while on the field or in the graveyard, and if your opponent special summons a monster or monsters except during a damage step, you can send this card from the hand or field to the graveyard to special summon a Red Eyes monster from your hand or deck except itself. You can only use this effect once per turn, and then you've got a nice little quick effect to target a Red Eyes Black Dragon you control and you inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. So again, it's kind of a nice way of being able to get into your other Red Eyes monsters. Unfortunately, this is called Black Metal Dragon, not Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon, which would have been insanely nice. Um, but the fact is you can drop a monster on your opponent during their turn, which is kind of nice to build up a wall and set up plays. And that also helps you out with your Red Eyes Fusion plays, because the idea is you're already going to have a monster on the board to help you do damage. And then once you add Dark Dragoon to the board as well, which you're probably going to make with Dark Magician and Red Eyes, hopefully what you're doing is pushing for game. Like, there are times when Dragoon can push the game on its own just by popping to burn him twice and then attacking. Um, but then there might be that time where you need that additional monster on the board that can help you push the game. Then, of course, you do have the one Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. 
Then for the others, we are playing at Beastials. Now, I've gone with a very aggressive build in the sense that I don't play any hand traps bar the Beastials. I'm actually focusing more on board breaking options. And the reason that the Beastials are actually quite cool in this build is because in the right matchup, if your opponent is utilizing lights and darks and everything else like that, you can really catch them off guard. Um, so we've gone with two Magnemute, which because of the in the end phase, you can search you any dragon in your entire deck. Your Druid Swarm is obviously the send and send, and then the Ball Drake is the target and destroyer. So all of these have great utility, uh, which is why I've gone with a very small four card engine. You can make these more prominent if the format depends it or the local environment is like, yeah, you know, all of my opponents are playing loads of darks. You could then look into putting into a Lubellion. You can then add in the trap card and the spell cards. You're getting draw power, you're getting um, destruction power, everything else like that. But then I feel once you start taking that route, you're kind of bending more towards a Dragon Link deck than you are a Red Eyes deck. Uh, and then the normal summon engine of the deck is the um, Chimera engine or the Illusion engine. Now, this engine can very easily become Key with Dragon Magic. Technically, because of the introduction of the uh, Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon, you could play something like a um, Lava Golem in the main deck, which I think is really cool. You'd make your deck go second. The only issue when you're utilizing Kaijus and Lava Golems is you cannot then use uh, Red Eyes Fusion because Red Eyes Fusion only lets you set monsters the turn you activate it, not even for the rest of the turn, which is absolutely insane. Uh, so you do need to be very, very careful. So as you'll see as we go through this list, we are relying less on Red Eyes Fusion turn zero. Um, it's one of the ones where if we get it, great, we're gonna activate it, we're gonna make Dragoon, we're gonna make sure we try and push and win the duel from that point on. But if we don't, if we're going first, if we're going second, we're setting up Kotal with Mirror Sword to give us the graveyard negations, while also being able to go through Claws and Berthamet to the fusion to either rip one from our opponent's hand, set up Guardian Chimera to pop cards, draw cards, um, and you name it. If you wanted to make this engine more prominent, you can go for a second big winged. If you're like, I really don't want to lock myself into fusions at any point, then you could take the big winged out. It does kind of um, narrow down the scope of where you're going to be able to go with this because it doesn't create the greatest combo um, because you still need to use a beast and or fiend. But um, that is an option for you. The reason I like this in this version over the Keeper of Dragon Magic is for the pure fact that Keeper of Dragon Magic locks you into fusions the entire turn. So does fusion deployment. So it's one of the ones where it's like, right, okay, well, I don't mind just going hard into the fusion plays. I don't mind locking myself. And if you were going to do that, you'd play free Keeper of Dragon Magic instead. You'd play one um, Magicalized Fusion because you can get your Dark Magician and your Red Eyes to the graveyard. You could then play one Greater Poly, one Normal Poly or anything else you want. And then free Fusion Deployment just to give you that additional monsters on the board. They can then be used as fusion material. So it's entirely up to you um, of, of where you want to flex it around. And like I said, I'll show you the direct engines at the end of the video so you can kind of see what other directions you can go for. The reason I like playing this engine over the keeper is because it allowed me to make XYZ plays, it might allow me to make link plays as well, so it gives you a bit more flexibility. For the spells, we are playing Triple Allure of Darkness um, alongside Triple Red Eyes Insight. Double Red Eyes Fusion. Arguably, you could cut this down to one if you want to because Red Eyes Insight is also going to search you out your return of the red eyes and your red eye spirit. So it's a bit more of a control option. But um, again, this is kind of one of the ones where it's like, right, I only want to go second. My goal of this entire day is to go second and OTK the board. Then you probably look at more board breakers. You'd look at stuff like Forbidden Droplet to help make sure your Dragoon goes off and your red eyes fusion is successful. You'd look at stuff like um, Book of Eclipses to make sure any monsters on the field need to negate or get flipped face down. Obviously you don't want to use anything like a Dar Ruler no more because you need to conduct the damage. And that's kind of where you would change these up. You can go for like Triple Tactics Frost, Raigekis, Lightning Storms, you name it. Then of course we've got two Return of the Dragon Lords. So this is just a really nice monster reborn for level seven and eight dragon types specifically. But it does have that great ability in the graveyard that if a dragon type monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you get to banish it from the graveyard instead. Entirely up to you, these are optional, you don't need to play them at all. And then the final kind of little mini engine we're playing is a go second engine, which is triple super poly and double riding the multi-dimensional kaiju. The reason I'm playing this one is because obviously it's Darks, it's a great allure target, but it's also a level 7. So if you were to special summon this onto your opponent's board, you can special summon down one of your own ones, and then you've got instant rank 7 access. Not to mention when you're giving your opponent a Dark Kaiju, you've also got the ability of Super Poly to get you into something like Starving Venom, which is really kind of cool. So again, this engine is interchangeable. If you're like, you know what, I want to play a control version, then this can very easily be three Nadir Servant, one Fleur Delis, and then one of the... Um, Shadol Schism Trap card, and then you're going to be utilizing Winder in the uh, Winder in the deck, which I showed you in a previous profile um, back in April, I believe it was. 
So that's your option, there's so much flexibility. So before I show you the full on extra deck, I'm just gonna show you the cards that I would say you have the ability to adapt into your alternative, engine, alternative engines. So of course you've got your Super Polys with your Kaijus, so that's your Go second engine. You then have your Chimera engine, so you can see how big the Chimera engine is, even when it's kept at like a base minimum, um, it's straight away a eight card engine. The Beastles, I still feel you'd play no matter what version you're doing, because it's just a great hand trap. So then, these are the flex spots, in my opinion. So these flex spots can very easily become, I want to go first, I don't want to play my control versions, okay, cool, well I'm going to go with my Nadir Servants, my Fleur Delis, and the Trap Card. So that's your option there. If you're like, right, I actually don't mind going second, but I want to play more control cards and I want to minimize this engine down, well, you'd go for Free Keeper of Dragon Magics, you'd go for a Magicalized Fusion, uh, you can go for other polys if you want to, or at the base minimum, you just go Free Keeper and then one Magicalized, or one Fusion spell to search off of it. And then if you're like, right, well, I don't want to play this, I don't want to Fusion Lock myself at all, I actually want to move more down the Dragon Link area and be able to Dragon Link or link my board up as well, well then I would consider looking into something like Noctivision Dragon, you'd then have the ability of focusing on more Dragon Link-esque cards. So you could go for stuff like Quick Launches, you could go for stuff um, like Dragon's Ravine that you'd get off the back of your Romulus, and then you just utilize everything else like that. So that's a couple of different options, that's why I've put these in white sleeves, I've put the other ones in blue sleeves as well, so you just can't tell the difference that they're not part of the main deck that I'm showing you. Um, but this is a list, like I said, this lineup here of the Chimeras or the Illusions plus the Ghost Second cards are all up to you. Um, if you don't have access to these, you cut them completely, and then the extra deck will adapt accordingly to what else you put in. If you put in the Dogmatica engine, then obviously you're going to be putting into um, the Predaplant Chimera Flesia, so you can send that and get a search with your Red Eyes Fusion the next turn. You'd be looking at stuff like Winders as well. Anyway, let's move on to the extra deck. So the two cards that will be coming off of the back of Red Eyes Fusion is of course Dragoon and your Meteor Black Comet. So you've got your burn option, you've got your pretty much aggressive all out boss monster. The idea is that only one of these is gonna come out per turn and only one of these is gonna stay on the board uh, or pretty much occupy your board for that entire turn. So you do need to be very, very careful. For the Chimera cards that you're going to be getting to be able to play, you can play your Guardian Chimera, your Chimera King, and your Chimera Illusion. So this is obviously your Aggressor, this is your Hand Ripper and Graveyard uh, Recycle, like Consistency card, and then of course you've got your Chimera, just Board Destruction and Draw cards. For your Super Poly targets, of course you've got Mud Dragon, Garura, uh, Predaplant, Dracus Depelia, and Starving Venom. Now obviously if some of these are ineffective at your local environment, you can change them out. If the Drake, uh, the dragon that deals with Manadiums, which deals with a warrior and a dragon, is more effective, then you put that in. Um, I still quite like Starving Venom, because I give my opponent a dark kaiju, it's like, right, okay, cool, Super Poly, Starving Venom, I'm good to rock and roll and get even stronger. But this can be one of the ones that makes the sacrifice if you wanted to change it around a little bit. Again, if you're not playing Super Poly, four cards very easily out, and then four cards in, whether you decide to go down the Nadir route, the Fusion Lock route, or if you decide to go down the... Um, if you decide to go down the Link route as well. So what I liked about this was the flexibility, so it allowed me to play some XYZ, so we've got Ibon Illusion. Now this one will specifically only allow you to special summon um, a spell cast a normal monster from your hand or deck, uh, and then when that normal monster de declares an attack, you can then banish a card. So this is optional, you don't have to play it, I just thought it was a cool card to put in here. The more kind of meta relevant card would be Big Eye, uh, but I kind of like the idea of being able to utilize this in the deck, just for a bit of fun. But mainly you're going to focus on Red Eyes Flare Metal, Draco Sack to deal with Skill Drain, uh, and then Dark Arm Dragon just to deal with pretty much anything. And the fact is, if you have exactly five Darks in your graveyard, you can also XYZ Dark Arm the dark, uh, Dragon of Annihilation, but he's in a level five or higher Dark Dragon. So very easy to use it with one material if it's in the like, late grind game as well. And then instantly you can attack with this and then just go straight into a Zeus if you wanted to play Zeus. And that's where your flex of your Bond Illusion would come out as well. So just going to show you a couple of different options here. And then the only Link Monsters we play is uh, Striker Seals, because the idea is that if you do open up with your uh, Black Metal Dragon, you turn Black Metal into Striker, um, and then your Black Metal will search you out your Red Eyes Darkness. Red Eyes Darkness can summon itself down by banishing, 
uh, and then you can bring one ball, one more monster back to the board, and then you can link off your striker to your seals, and then seals can then ultimately lead you into a Magnemute for a search during the end phase, or it can lead you into some of your other Red Eyes monsters as well. So it gives you a bit of flexibility. Like I said, this extra day is to kind of show you the range, to show you options. It's like, right, okay, well, you're not just fusion locked, you're not just XYZ locked, you're not just uh, link locked, you can adapt it if you want to. Here are the base minimum ones that I would advise you to go for, and then adapt depending on the strategy that you are gonna approach or take with this deck as well. Anyway, I hope this video has been informative. I hope it's shown you a breakdown of everything you can do with Red Eyes. Like I said, Red Eyes is probably one of the most frustrating decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! For the pure fact that it has so much potential, its cards on their own, without their restrictions, just the effects that they produce, like the burn ability, the fusion from deck without your opponent needing to control a card or anything like that, is absolutely insane. But it's always the drawbacks on all of those effects that then make it painful and a lot more difficult to play and pilot. Uh, but yeah, really do enjoy Red Eyes. It is a nice, interesting deck, but it is one at the moment where unless you're trying, like you're better off going down a Dragon Link route if you want to compete at the highest level. If you're like, okay, well my local environment is very casual, I want to play Red Eyes or we like playing Legacy decks, then this is one of the options for you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Any questions at all, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe and of course, happy Dueling.